So when you first came out of makeup and you had your hair and stuff, did you look at yourself and think, I look a bit like Eminem, or was that just me? That was just you. That was just me. I never ever thought that once. No, that's just my first question. I don't know, I've never seen Eminem with hair sort of straight back. No. Maybe more Legolas, really, but that's not Eminem. True. Not Eminem. Oh. I love your character in this movie. Thank you. She sort of comes with so much integrity. It's a real great role for you to get your teeth stuck into, isn't it? In Thank instance. you very much. I feel very lucky and happy that I worked with filmmakers and storytellers that weren't interested in just repeating uh, a formulaic uh, archetypal presentation of a woman and that, that, that weren't afraid to step up to the demands, the growing demands for better, more accurate, more nuanced representations of uh, of women, and not only in the entertainment industry, but in, especially in the comic book world. I was, I, I feel very, very lucky that I'm, I'm surrounded by a team that sought to protect the integrity of her strength and uh, a nuance, frankly. She's not a damsel in distress, is she? No, not no. at all. I mean, you know, it's kind of funny because Mare's, in saying Mare's not a damsel in distress, it's like, wait, no, why? It, but why would yeah. she be? And it's because that's normally how they're represented. And women in general are, are relegated to these reactionary postures and these positions that are limited and two-dimensional and and uh, you know hypersexualized. And that's it. That's all they get. And it doesn't represent to me the. It's not an accurate representation of the female experience by any means. Where half the population is going, where where is a representation of us and all of our strengths and weaknesses and laws and complexity. And I'm really, really, really lucky I got uh, a chance to play this part because Mira is her, her own superhero. She has her own name. One of the things that really grabbed me about this was the, the kind of tone of it. You know, it was right. it managed to be what like all really I think great superhero movies are. At that kind of uh, be to be funny and be witty and at the same time never compromise on the kind of severity of the narrative or the stakes. How difficult is it getting that that balance just right? Because obviously we've seen other sort of comic book movies struggle to do it, but this one really manages to nail it. Yeah, it, it's definitely uh, you know it, it is that fine line that I have to kind of like you know walk that tight rope of uh, okay, it is a you know the 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 source material is very colorful and very quirky and full of weird and wonderful sort of characters and, and, and creatures and stuff like that but at the same time it, it, it does deal with um, you know things like the environment you know it deals with like sort of um, themes of family and uh, and uh, and uh, you know uh, coming of age and stuff like that and so uh, it, it's it's about finding that right balance and uh, you know I, I think it is it, it can be tricky, but uh, but I think uh, it was one that was worth kind of like, you know, really sort of focusing on. I just interviewed James, and obviously, I mean, you guys have worked together on several occasions. He had so many lovely things to say about you. What, what well, is you'll it? find none of that. <laughs> but what, what is it about uh, James that keeps drawing you back into his projects? You know? <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, the easy answer is I, I, I have fun. I mean, sometimes it's really that simple. I think we have a, it's been that, that, that unusual, situation where both your movies are you have a great experience doing it they're good they work uh they do well i mean i think that's that that's part of the equation although i think if you know uh and i just i believe i, I just believe in the guy that he can do any genre so and i think he, he also likes to um he likes to push me um, I think it's that, you know, you find your comfort zone with, with someone and then you want to push them into maybe places they haven't gone before. And he, he certainly does that with me. So, um, and the older I get, honestly, I just like to work with people that I like. Exactly. So, <laughs> there's that. I've noticed a real change, but from within the industry, have you noticed that we are finally making movements, particularly in this genre? Because obviously Wonder Woman, then there's Captain Marvel, and then there was the Wasp, obviously, and Ant-Man as well. I mean, it feels like we are seeing more nuanced, sort of layered female roles in this now. I mean, have you, have you, does it feel like something is finally changing? I think it's great that we're having these conversations, and I feel incredibly lucky to be a part of a movie that didn't... Uh, it wasn't interested in maintaining the status quo by representing a woman in uh, some boring two-dimensional way, but that sought to also challenge uh, the archetype for the man as well. Great that I have strength and that she's empowered and she has a sense of agency. But they also allowed uh, for um, Jason Momoa's character to present not just the, you know, hyper-masculine, um, uh, you know what he, how he presents on surface, and just leave him to that. He's also complex and nuanced. He's layered, in a sense that he, they also allow, despite his masculine uh, affect, 
for vulnerability, for sensitivity, you know, for a sense uh, an awareness of my emotional well-being, insecurity. Mm -hmm. I love that they they didn't relegate any of our characters to an archetype. You must have had so much fun playing around with it, the look of this. And how what was it? What was it like getting that exact right aesthetic? Yeah, I had so much fun designing the visuals of this film. I think that was the best part about making this movie. Is uh, is very early on creating the worlds. I've been wanting to create, um, make one of these sort of world creation movies for a while, and, uh, and and this project really allowed me that opportunity to design something that was you know a bit unique, a bit out of the box, and something that we haven't quite seen before. And uh, and going to this, I just know that um. At Atlantis needs to be vibrant, full of life, and uh, and just kind of embrace the world that it's from. Um, but but at the same time, I feel like you know because I'm playing in, in this massive sort of oceanic world, and we, we all know the ocean can be wondrous and magical, but it can also be scary as well. And so uh, there are other aspect of it that allows me to kind of dig into my horror roots and uh, and make parts of the movie just you know a little bit scary. Yeah. One of the things I really loved about it, it's so easy to write off villains in superhero movies as being the villain. But actually, they, they, it's such a very right. complex character, isn't it? And I actually yeah. find that th there was much, some stuff he would say and stuff, you can almost find reasons in it. And I was wondering as an actor, when I you- almost find reasons, <laughs> I find lots of yeah. reasons. But I mean, how important <laughs> is it for you when, when playing a role like this that you can understand their motives and you can find empathy you do, towards Yeah, them? You, and I see what you're saying. You you have to, again, you, you, you don't have to like him or dislike him, but you have to care. You have to understand where they're coming from. Even if it's in a, even if it's absurd, even if it's, uh, which it's not here. It's very real here for him. His oceans have been polluted and he's been destroyed by the surface world and he's going to do something about it. I mean, period. <laughs> Full stop. That, 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 that's, that's why he's, he's, uh, he's on this path. And that's very easy to understand because we are destroying the oceans. So I'd be pretty angry too. And I mean, obviously it's such a cliche to say it, but there was a great chemistry between the two. I mean, and you just got the sense that you just got on really well. I mean, that must make things so much easier when you meet your kind of co-star and you just think, yeah, you're, you're, a, you're a decent person, I reckon I can have fun with you. Because ultimately, when it, what it comes down to is, you want to have fun when you make these movies as well. Especially when you're working, you know, you, you definitely want to have fun when you're making these movies because you're working incredibly long hours away from home, often for, for many, many, many months on end. And I was lucky that I got to know him a bit in Justice League when we were filming that. Even though I just worked for a short amount of time, I was there for a very long time in training. And uh, this movie took a long time to film, so I, I'm especially grateful that I have a co-star like Jason. We just get along really well. It's really easy with him. Yeah. Now the only downside is the amount of wine that went to waste in that scene in Sicily. All that wine, that great red wine that just... I know, just... Uh, I, I don't like seeing red wine go to waste, no. ever. Uh, yesterday I interviewed uh, Stephen Lang and Hugo Weaving, who both play villains a lot, Huge and are really, really, bit it, really good at it as well. Hugo Weaving. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask him to do that, you said, but I um, And we were talking about how playing sort of villains in films can be quite a cathartic experience, because in some ways you get to access sort of inner emotions and sides to you that we all kind of have, but we're taught yeah. not to bring out in real life. Did you find, did you find that? I always find that. I love playing guys that are, that are, that are rough around the edges, that, are, that have a darkness in them. It's probably why I grew Gravitated towards some some horror movies as well. I I, uh, I I like that. I like. I've always been fascinated by sort of the the violence of of men, of of people, but specifically of men. So of of men, what's inside you? Because I think we do all have that, um, and it's just different characters bring that out. So that's 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 always fun, and then, and it is cathartic. It's very you know. I live a pretty easygoing, mild mannered life, and I'm 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 pretty simple guy with my wife and my kids and my animals and living my life. Um, so when I get to work, I like to stretch out a little bit. And thanks to you, we keep seeing Patrick Wilson in fantastic roles. So <laughs> what is it about him that you just, because uh, I mean, he, I think he's a fantastic actor, but, it needs, but you obviously work, you've worked together on several occasions. Yeah, what is it about him that keeps drawing you back? I, well, for the very thing that you just said, he's <laughs> an amazing actor, he's fantastic, and he's just such a cool guy to work with. Uh, Patrick and I just, we just get along, and uh, he, you know, we, we, we've done enough movies where we, I uh, was just so comfortable with each other, we 
have so much trust in each other, you know, that, he, you know, he knows I'm gonna, you know, uh, look after him and uh, and he's gonna, you know, try things with me and, and, and do things um, for me that I would ask for. And I, I, I don't have to kind of like explain or tell him twice why I, I'm trying to do this really weird, bizarre things. And so, you know, we just have this, um, you know, just this r relationship of trust. And, uh, and definitely that comes from having done a bunch of projects together and um, and yeah and you know uh, from the get-go when I was working on the script I just felt that you know the only person that I want to play King Orem is Patrick Wilson. Mm. And when you mentioned obviously horror movies and one of the, that, the character of Ed Warren is one that you obviously you keep, you've returned to before we, but w w why do we want to keep returning because I mean I'm a huge fan of the whole kind of Conjuring yeah. franchise and it's it's really taken off in a way that I guess sometimes you can never predict in, in so, so what do you think it is about this these characters in this this world but it's just so popular well I think real quickly I think with Ed and Lorraine I think it's just a very different dynamic that uh, you're used to if there's been a series of horror films usually you're following people that have been uh, you know, affected by the 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 demon or whatever it's going to be, and I've done that with Insidious, and uh, but I think with Ed and Lorraine, they're each investigating. You you find them investigating these stories, and these very dark stuff, and so to counteract that, you really bring out this relationship with them. So I think that's something people really latch onto. It's sort of we've got these idealized versions of these two characters. So me and Vera have such fun because we you get involved in these really horrific storylines that tax you to the bone physically and spiritually that when you come out of that you want to just be opposite someone that uh, you have a great relationship with chemistry with and can build that family with so I think people again it's back to that idea of if you care about these people and I think people we found really deeply care about our Ed and Lorraine Warren so you want to see them help other people and see them help each other. Uh, so I think we, you know, we'll keep coming back to that yeah, as long as they work. I bloody love the Warrens. I love them. <laughs> anyway, a slightly less expected uh, addition to the cast was Julie Andrews. <laughs> How did that all come about? Um, well, I knew going into it that, uh, that the all-powerful Karathan creature was someone that I, a, I wanted to be female and British, <laughs> and uh, and so uh, you know so you know you you kind of you, you go through the list and uh, and you know uh, you know you you know. Uh, just you know, going through all these great names, and uh, and when Julie's name came up, I was like, oh my god, that'd be incredible if I could get Julie for this. Mm. And I, I love the idea that she could, uh, you know, like voice and be the you know like for me what I consider the most powerful creature in in, in my movie. And uh, and unfortunately, as it turned out, um, I think she said um, her grandson is a big fan of like my films and so uh, she kind of urged grandma to do this film yeah. so I was like very thankful to him for uh, getting her on our film. Mm -hmm. And just finally very quickly I just want to obviously the movies like this always lead, lead into other stories is this, a fan, is this a world you'd like to enter in again perhaps one day? I think it's a really cool fun world to uh, you know to kind of explore I feel like it, it's a big big world um, but you know I, I, I don't want to talk about sequels before the first film has, has even come out. <laughs> Enough. Thank you so much for your yeah. time. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!